morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran in Lincoln, Nebraska. God's blessings to you all as we gather today around his word and his sacrament to be fed by him, the Lord of all life. Words that we ought to be reminded of on a regular basis, and I've not done a very good job of reminding you of them, is our line that is written in scripture for us already in Revelation chapter 7, as all people, all believers are gathered around the throne of the Lamb, white robes and palm branches. And here's your line, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And those are indeed good words for us to practice and get used to saying as we look forward to saying them together in eternity as John saw it as it has already happened uh, as in his seeing. Um, so a good opportunity for us to gather together today and be reminded of who we are and whose we are as we hear uh, from God and his word. Our first hymn for today is hymn number 524, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. We will uh, sing that, but before we do, we want to share the peace of Christ with those sitting around us. God's blessings to you all this day. Turn to page 203, and we continue with the invocation, confession, and absolution as well. I invite you to please stand. We call upon God's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. And since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ from the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We join our voices together. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you have declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our entrance hymn for today, hymn number 506, Glory Be to the Father. And the collect of the day. And the Lord be with you. And we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the hearing of God's word. The Old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries 
and will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of, on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock, they shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set them over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord God, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson for today comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 17. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We continue then as we stand and sing the Alleluia in verse as we prepare to hear the gospel reading. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We sing hymn number 609, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive.
Our texts for today all work so well together. They kind of just plow one into the next. So I know you have a typecast for me that I should uh, be down there preaching. Normally I don't wear glasses when I'm preaching. And typically I preach two different sermons on a Sunday. But not this Sunday, so you never know what you're going to get. Our Old Testament lesson that I want to focus on, the portion that I want to focus on, is just uh, two verses from Ezekiel 34. I'm going to read that for you, then our lesson from 1 Timothy, uh, those section, that portion, and then finally our gospel reading, just a portion of it as well. So if you would open up your hearts and your minds, your ears, to hear these words from Ezekiel 34. I wish to share with you again verses 15 through 16. The Lord declares, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong. I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. And then from 1 Timothy chapter 1, St. Paul uh, shares these words with us, uh, verses 5 through 11. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good, if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. And finally, these words from Jesus, our Lord, in Luke 15. i share with you these few verses as well. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he has not lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. So far, our texts, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear baptized people of God. Jesus was indeed a typecast as well. The Pharisees knew he was a good man as related to the words of Nicodemus who came to him late at night so as not to be outed. Nicodemus says to Jesus, we know you're something special. Nobody can do the works that you do. But when we hear in Luke's gospel today, the Pharisees didn't like what they were seeing. He sits with sinners. He eats with sinners. How dare he? This whole idea of being typecast is something that I ran into in my high school career. I was in a bookstore and I saw a magazine and it had an article about my favorite actor, Harrison Ford. He had the role of Han Solo in the Star Wars movies. I was reading about him and it made this strange reading when I read that Harrison Ford did not want his character Han Solo to go beyond Empire Strikes Back. He felt that his character should have died off. I thought, what? 
He didn't like Star Wars. Everybody likes Star Wars. I love Star Wars. But Harrison Ford wanted to be done with it. He said that he felt the character didn't have any more room to grow. And then I read the words written or spoken by him from a business and actor type sensibility. He said, I didn't want to be typecast. That means that people, when they see that movie star, only see that one character they played, and directors and producers know this, so when they write their new movie, they know that they can't have Han Solo in their movie. He didn't want to be known only for that role. Jesus was typecast. How about you and me? Do the roles that we play, are they only roles that the world expects us to be in? Particularly as it relates to sin and our struggles and battles with sin. Paul lays forward for us the law. And you know as well as I that as Paul writes about it, the law is good, but it shines forth things that you and I don't want anybody else to see, and we certainly don't want God to know about any of them. The law is that thing that shows us our sin. But are we, are we only an amalgamation of our sin and our sinfulness and the behaviors we have? Listen to this. I don't know if you find yourself in any of these categories. I know a couple that I probably could put myself into. Paul writes to the young pastor Timothy, his first letter in the first chapter. He says understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for these ones, for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. If anything, you and I sit in the title sinner. We're all lumped in it together. The reality is that St. Paul also writes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the law comes and it strikes fear and terror into our hearts and into our minds. And it declares those who have sinned deserve punishment justly. And so what of it? Am I the whole sum of my sin? Is that who I am known as? Is my identity fully wrapped up in my waywardness? And the fact that I am a poor, miserable sinner. There's a sign that sits in a yard right here on 13th Street. I've seen it multiple times, so I've used this in a variety of my devotions for various meetings and get-togethers. But I want to share it with you today. It's a sign that sits in a yard. I've seen it multiple times over the past few weeks. I'm sure I'll see it some more. I, I don't know the people who have it in their yard, but it reads this. Your mistakes do not define you. Your mistakes do not define you. The first time I saw that, I battled in my brain to, to realize, is this true? I think I've come to the conclusion that, yes, it is. But I had a retort to it in my mind. My mistakes don't define me, but my scars sure do. See, the reality of my sin is that it has consequences, no doubt. The decisions and choices I make do have consequences. We know ultimately the consequence of sin is condemnation. 
But you and I do bear the scars of our sins. Those things that we've done and those things we've left undone. And can I bear them? In the law, you and I cannot. In the law, you and I are broken and we are bound and we need a redeemer. We need salvation. We need somebody else's wounds and scars to bring healing. Couldn't help but reading through this Timothy text this week. Try to read on Monday the texts for the coming Sunday so I know where I need to go, how to preach, and what to say. The one that was a bright flashing word for me was homosexuality. You know as well as I as that is a real thing in our world. It's not just something that happened long ago and exists elsewhere. It's probably even entered into your own homes and you've been attacked with it and you don't know how to respond. I've heard too often that those who struggle with this very thing think that we as the church hate. I know that's not true. You see the reality is all sin is a stench before God. But am I typecast as my own sin? Is that who I am? And I have a better word for you guys today. A word that is, yes, that law that condemns and convicts and leaves us dead and broken on the side of the road. But our good Samaritan comes and he sees our wounds and he seeks to bind them with his own wounds. You see, the sign says your mistakes don't define you. I stated, but my scars do. When I ran this line past my wife this past week, her face said it all. That's not enough, Dan. There's got to be more. And so in that instant in our kitchen, as I looked in her eyes across that table, I followed those words up with his scars define who we are. My mistakes don't define me. My scars too do, but greater than that, his scars define exactly who I am. My identity is not wrapped up in my sin and my brokenness. My identity is not wrapped up in the death that I surely will receive as a wage paid for my sin. But I'm defined by the scars of hands on a cross, the scar of thorns on a head, the scar of a hole, a nail hole through heels of the feet of one who was crucified as a mere criminal. My identity is wrapped up in the scar of the side of my Savior who died for my sin for my transgression, that I may not no longer be identified as it, but identified as his. Thomas saw his Lord that day. It was two weeks after Easter. Jesus appears and he says, peace be with you. And then he attacks the guilt of Thomas. And he says, look and see the scars, see the nail holes, see the holes in my feet, see the hole in my side. Take your hand and stop being in unbelief and start believing, Thomas, because my scars identify you as my heavenly father's child. Our God declares in our Old Testament lesson today through the prophet Ezekiel, he says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. 
and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. You are not your own, and you do not belong to yourself alone. You belong to Him, for He seeks to save that which is broken, that which is lost. Jesus in our gospel lesson reiterates this point, and be very clear here, He is speaking about you, and He is speaking about all who have forsaken the truth of the gospel for the lies of Satan, the world, and sinful flesh. He seeks for you to be defined not by your scars, but by His. Jesus steps outside of that task of being typecast as one who would have nothing to do with sinners when He Himself becomes sin and is nailed to the cross for you and for me. And He concludes His parable today as He speaks of those 99 sheep that are left behind as the shepherd goes and seeks that one lost sheep. He concludes it with these words. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. It is the law that drives us to our knees as we see the just nature of God so we see his expectation for his people, and when we see that we have transgressed, we cry out, Abba, Father, save me, rescue me, deliver me. And to quote the prophet Isaiah, by his wounds, you and I are healed. And so where do we go from here? Into the waiting arms of our Savior. We stand on the law, for it is good, right, and it declares who we are. But we stand in the stead of those wounds of our Lord and Savior, the Great Shepherd, who redeems us and purchases us, purchases us by His blood and sets us free to be His children. In all of these things, we rely fully on those words that I wish to leave with you each and every week because Satan and your sinful flesh are working hard to erase them, that they may be emblazoned upon your hearts and upon your minds, that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, that lost sheep, Christ Jesus, the good shepherd, laid down his life and died on the cross for us. That you and I may always be able to repeat that refrain that we will speak in eternity as John has already heard you declare it. That salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. His peace and his joy be in your hearts as you are defined by his scars until life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We would continue in our service then as we would lift up a variety of individuals to the Lord in prayer. I would like to let you know, especially those people sitting on this side of the church, that our dear Bo brother Bob is here in church today. He's been ill for some time, and uh, we praise God for his presence here and uh, for the recovery that he has undergone. We will uh, add that to our prayers, as well as we would add uh, Herb Musman to our prayers. He is hospitalized and struggling with some issues with his colon, um, and so we would lift him and Ida up in our prayers. And we would add Margaret Balderson and Evelyn Neitzel to our prayers as well, as uh, both are uh, in the midst of uh, either going to be receiving or are receiving uh, hospice care. We uh, turn to the Lord then in our prayers.
Almighty Father in heaven, we come before you this day seeking and imploring your grace as always. For we, like sheep, have gone astray. So often are we lured away by temptation and the promises of a sin-sick world. Heavenly Father, that in repentance you would come and claim your sheep, that you would rescue us, deliver us, and restore us to be in your fold and to be under your care. O Heavenly Father, that you would continue to see us not as our sin deserves, but as the wounds of our brother Jesus Christ determine. Heavenly Father, then, that you would strengthen us in our desire to share this good news with the world, that we would be proclaimers of your holiness, your righteousness, of your mercy, and of your love. And so, Lord, we lift up to you a variety of individuals today that you would accomplish your will in their lives. Lord, we thank and praise you that uh, Bob has undergone, undergone healing. Pray that you would continue to strengthen him, to watch over him, that he may continue to endure as he is your child. Be with Kevin and Bill. Continue to strengthen them. Be with those who battle cancer. We lift up to you, especially today, Fran and Lyle and Judy. We give you thanks that Lyle is recovered much, and pray, O oh Lord, that you'd continue to bring healing for him as well. We thank you that he is able to offer up that offering of playing hymns and music, and that it would be edifying and render to you glory. Lord, then, that you would continue to be with Anthony and Oscar, be with all children who are struggling with various diseases. Pray, O Lord, that you would continue to lift them and their families up and bring healing as you see fit. Lord, then, that you would be with all those who battle cancer in various ways and various stages. Be with them and their caretakers. Be with uh, those who uh, travel with them to and fro from appointments. Lord, that you would strengthen. We lift up to you as well, Herb, and pray that you would be with him and bring healing for his body. We lift up to you, Margaret and Evelyn, and pray, O Lord, that you would continue to direct them towards Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of their faiths. Heavenly Father, then, that you would continue to be with our school. We lift up to you uh, the families that are listed in our bulletin, but all of our, our school families. Be with our students as well. Strengthen them as they learn more about you and more about this world. Lord, that you would be with those who are struggling with the reality of tornadoes, hurricanes, and other natural disasters. For we know all these things come at the reality of this being a fallen world. We pray, O Lord, though, that these things would be utilized to draw your children closer to you. Lord, then, that you would uh, be with those who celebrate birthdays and baptismal birthdays this week. We lift up to you President Harrison and President Snow. Lord, that you would be with Ashley as she gets things uh, set and prepared for her trip to Cambodia. Bless her time there and utilize her to bring the good news of Christ to those in that country. Lord, then that you would be with those who celebrate anniversaries this week. We lift up to you, Dean and Pam, Stephen and uh, Tammy, Howard and Carol, Brock and Wendy, Larry and Linda. That you would be and abide with each of these and strengthen them in their vows to each other they would continue to rely upon you and be drawn closer to you. Heavenly Father, all these things we lift up to you and pray your will be done. Amen. We receive now our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Um, We also would fill out those friendship uh, cards that are in your pews as well.